early days in Montreal, what, it, what must it have been like in a country that almost had no culture, that had touring companies coming in all the time? Yeah. Very few companies. wasn't Stratford. There wasn't any resident company. Well, really there was the MRT, the Montreal Repertory Theater, which was amateur in status and started by Martha Allen, who was Sir Montague Allen's daughter. She had a lot of money and she had a lot of influence and she began it, she founded it. And she got an awful lot of terrific actors, some of them ex-professional, to come and form the nucleus of a very strong English company. And I started there. Herbie Whitaker directing me and uh, also Pierre Dagenet, the young French genius of that time, Montreal was already had its own culture because it already had its own French theater. It had the, 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 Les Compagnons de Saint Laurent, which was run by Pierre, Pierre Legault, Father Legault, who was, the, who was a priest who had begun this marvelous company. With all sorts of young people, I think there was a young Gratien Gelina in there somewhere, you know, but all the young people who, who became well known later as French Canadian stars. Uh, like, I think Jean Gascon worked with them bef before he had started with Jean Louis Roux, the Théâtre de Nouveau Monde. So the, the French already had it. And they, they, they also had it professionally because they were professional actors. And radio had begun. English and, radio. And French. French. French radio was very, very big and, and, and English radio under an old pro called Rupert Kaplan, whom I worked with a lot when I was a kid. And, I'm, and I made quite a sizable living in Montreal from, from radio in those early days. And how old were you when you started I radio? I think about 17 or 18. I had um, already done Ottawa. Right. And then went back to Montreal and did, and did radio. But did it seem bleak or daunting to think, I actually am going to have a career in the theater given how little what, what was going on? No, I was determined to do it. I, I wanted to be a pianist because I play the piano. Uh, and then I, I realized, oh my God, this is ridiculous. This is too much like work. Uh, <laughs> and what a lonely life this is going to be. God almighty. And, and, and act, being an actor, you is, you, you're working with the audience and with people and you're communicating. Uh, and the, mus and the, the musician's life is rather lonely. You just share the stage with your composer friend, who is probably dead. <laughs> and in the, with the exception of Glenn Gould, of course, who was sort of an actor manqué. Um, so Montreal was a jumping town. It had nightclub, which perhaps was its best theater of all, and which uh, there was almost as many nightclub clubs as there were days of the year. And it never closed Montreal, it really... I grew up at a time when Montreal was a swinging city. And what were the acts in the nightclubs? Well, I... I oh my God, just non-stop. You could go... You could just stay in the Ritz Hotel, for example, and, the, and, and watch um, Edith... No, no, Edith Piaf didn't come to the Ritz. But you you watch uh, Henri, uh, what was it, Salvador? You'd watch uh, um, all sorts of nightclub people like uh, Hildegard would come and uh, play the piano. Names that you probably, or most people don't know anymore, the big stars of the time would play at the Ritz. Uh, uh, Mabel Mercer, who was one of the really great uh, innovators of original kind of nightclub kind of uh, she was a, she was a black lady with enormous style and she phrased her songs fantastic I remember going to see her in New York years later she had her own little club in New York and people in the audience you would have Mel Torme and Frank Sinatra sitting there just watching her listening to the way she phrased songs both of those guys, of course, were extraordinary phrasers of songs, and yeah. I think they were uh, influenced a great deal by Mabel Mercer. So that sort of class act played at the Ritz. Uh, 
But there you were heading out into theater, but and most then, theater was imported. Most theater was touring productions coming yes, out. Yes, and on. except our little coterie of Beaumont, Montreal. And then you could go, I've got to finish this nightclub thing. I mean, every nightclub in town, it, it, Edith Piaf started, it came to Montreal. I mean, un unbelievable. And then you could go down to downtown Montreal in a place called the Martinique, which was an old nightclub, where, where Mistinguet was playing, aged 83. And I'll never forget her first entrance. She came on. Uh, I mean, the place was a raucous bunch of northerners, you know, big, huge hall with all sort of drunken guys on beer. And suddenly there's a, there's a raucous at the front door. There's a terrible scene going on, screaming and yelling. And the doorman and the bouncers are trying to throw out this old lady who makes up, non, je veux chanter, je veux chanter. And they're, they're saying, sortez, madame, sortez, sortez. And they're trying to push her out and she breaks free. And this old bag lady comes right through the tables, fighting her way through the tables towards the stage. And suddenly a spotlight hits her. And it's Miss Tanguette. And she sings Mon Homme, which was written for her. Absolutely still, and the house, wow. completely. I've never seen an entrance like that in my life. And then she just, during the song, walks towards the stage. She starts in the, wow. in the aisles between the tables and walks her way to the. Brought, I mean, the place was just oh, uh, wow, gaga, extraordinary. And then the second half of the program, <laughs> she's being whirled around. She had, she was famous for her legs, million dollar legs they called them. She still had great legs at 83. She'd been whirled around the stage by her young husband. They were doing the tango. They were doing all sorts of stuff. And, uh, wow, God, she worked. You could find those things in Montreal in the 40s. Yeah. So, I mean, that was theater to me, much more than what we had to offer. And I thought, my God, you know, if these people can hold a bunch of drunks <laughs> and can get their attention, there must be something about this profession that's rather exciting. And that is all the power of the 19th century music hall and music traditions. There she is at 80. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Still she's, alive you know, in one the, of the 40s. One of the world's great stars from Paris. Still alive, going at it. 